So I'm going to begin with this example. We're asked to construct a truth table for the statement P implies not Q. Or in other words, if P, then the negation of Q. So I'm going to begin my truth table by making a column for the P and a column for the Q. And I'm doing that because those are the two letters that are used in the problem. Now, for the P, I'm going to list different possibilities. And we know that for a truth table, it can be true or false. And so I'm going to list my true and false statements in this order. The first two I'm going to make true, and the second two I'm going to make false. Every time you start a truth table, you want to set up a P column that looks like this. So the way that I'm doing this, two trues and two falses, doesn't have anything to do with the specific problem. This is always what I'm going to start with. Likewise, for the Q, what I'm going to always do for the Q is I'm going to alternate between true and false. So I'm going to have TF, TF. And again, this is what I'm going to use every time I work a problem. This is my starting point. So the P column will have true, true, false, false, and the Q column will have true, false, true, false. Now, from there, my goal is going to be to construct the left-hand side of the compound statement and then the right-hand side, and then we're going to put them together. So looking at the left-hand side, the left-hand side only has a P. And we have that in the truth table because I have a column for P. So I would consider the left side done. All right, let's look at the right side. So the right side has the negation of Q. Now, I have a Q column, but I don't have a negation of Q column. So I'm going to add that in right here. We're going to make this the column for the negation of Q. Now, let's consider how we do that. Remember that when we go from the original statement to the negation, we change the truth value. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to look at my Q column and for the not Q I'm going to write the opposite truth values. So if the first one here is true then I'm going to write false because remember I'm going to do the opposite. And if the second one here is false, then I'm going to write true. The third one is true, so I'm going to write false. And the last one is false, so I'm going to write true. So again, the negation means that you are going to write the opposite of what you have in the original column. Alright, so now we have constructed the left side of the equation, the right side, and finally we need to put it together as an entire statement. So in the last column we're going to write the entire thing. We're going to write the P, the if-then arrow, and the not Q. Now to begin I'm gonna do a little bit of copying. So underneath this P I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna copy the P column. So TT 
FF. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put my arrow on each of these. All right, and then I'm going to copy the not Q. So we found that here. So I'm going to copy those underneath the not Q. So that is F, T, F, T. And I'm going to put an equal sign, and I'm going to figure out which truth value each of these has. Okay, so remember that this is your if-then statement. So, if we go back to the if-then table, this is the table that we're going to be using to answer these final problems. Remember that when we talked about this to begin with, we said that we wanted to remember that the only one that was false was the one that started with a true and then was a false. So the T arrow F is false and everything else is true. So keep that in mind. We're going to go back to the problem. Okay, so this first one is the false scenario, the T arrow F. And then we said all the other ones were true. So now that we've completed the table, this final column is the answer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple more of these. This is the sort of thing that hopefully will get easier with more examples. All right, so my next one says that we want to create a truth table for negation of P and the negation of Q. So again, because my problem has a P and a Q in it, I'm going to go ahead and the first column I'm going to make my P column, the second column I'm going to make my Q, and I'm going to put the standard values underneath. So remember, the first column is two trues and two falses, and the second column alternates true and false. And again, this does not change from one problem to the next. All right, so now let's look at building the individual sides. So the first thing I need to do is do a negation of P. I have a P column here, but I don't have the negation of P. All right, so let's work on that first. So remember the negation of P is going to be the opposite of the, num of the letters in the P column. So if the P column starts out true, true, then the negation is going to start out false, false. And if the P column ends with false, false, then the negation is going to have true, true. All right, so that's going to take care of the left-hand side of the problem. Now we'll move to the right-hand side. So the right-hand side says the negation of Q. Again, I have the Q column, but I don't have the negation column for Q. So we'll need to do that next. So here's the Q column. We're going to write the opposites over here under the negation. So the Q column goes T, F, T, F. So the negation will go F, T, F, T. And so now we have finished the right-hand side. So we have the left-hand side done and the right-hand side done. Now we're ready to do the whole thing. 
All right, so I'm going to write the entire thing here. And we'll begin by copying. So under the negation of P, I'm going to copy these values. So F, F, T, T. I'm going to put my AND symbol. In the negation of Q, I'm going to copy these values. So that's going to be F, T, F, T. All right, and then we'll put an equal sign. And then all of these statements are AND statements. So we want to remember that our AND table is only true if both of them are true. So this is the only scenario that's true. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to go back to the problem. And so this last one will be true, but all of the other ones will be false. And again, this final column, the answers to the final column are the answers to the problem. Okay, let's try one more. All right, so we want a truth table for the negation of P, if and only if, Q. Now, if you feel comfortable, you may want to stop the video here, or at least pause it, and try to set this one up yourself, and then come back and check. All right, so I'm going to begin with a P column and a Q column. And I know that my P column always has two trues and two falses. And the Q column will always go true, false, true, false. So that's the setup. All right, so let's look at the left side. So for the left side, I need to put a negation of P. I have the P column, but I don't have the negation. So let's do that. We're going to take these values and switch them. So all the trues become falses, and all the false values become true. And so that's going to take care of the left side. Now, the right side is already done. The right side is just a Q, and we have the Q column already finished. So we've now got the left side and the right side done. The last step is to put them together with the connective. So I'm going to write down the negation of P, my double arrow, and then my Q. All right, so let's do a little copying. So for the negation of P, I'm going to copy this column. So F, F, T, T. I'm now going to put my double arrow. And then for the Q, I'm going to copy this column. So TF, TF. All right, we'll put our equal signs. Now, these are my if and only ifs. So I can take a look back at my chart for if and only if. And I can remind myself that if and only if statements are true if you have the same two things on the left. So two trues or two falses, those are your true statements. All right, which means that this one is true and this one is true. 
but the other two are false.